So here's something new, for me at least. Um, I I was contacted by a uh, somewhat popular store. I'm, I'm sure you've heard of them if you've ever been shopping for this sort of device or for loads of other things, to be honest. But anyway, Banggood reached out and wanted to know if I would be interested in checking out these two babies right here. Um, so it's not not quite my usual uh, usual content, but um, I think I think it's still pretty interesting. I think I can give a pretty interesting take on this sort of stuff. Now I'm definitely not the first person to review one of these things, uh, so if you're coming in from the outside, you're not familiar with my channel, and you're not really vibing with what I'm putting down. Um, like I said, there are tons of other reviews out there. Uh, but what I want to do, I want to take a look at these and compare them to, for instance, just having a backlit Game Boy or something. Um, you know, compare what it's like playing on one of these things to backlighting a Game Boy or a Game Boy Advance SP or something. You know, what? how, how does it play? Now, of course, these things are going to have the advantage in that... Um, you just pop in a micro SD card and you're good to go with your ROMs. Um, also, these run way more than Game Boy, so um, they'll have that going for them. I am going to start, I'm going to do both in this video, uh, and I'm going to do this in three phases. I'm going to give you my initial impressions. Um, I'm going to pause the video take a break for a few weeks and just actually play with them so I can get a, a an accurate feel and uh, then I'll come back I'll tell you how that went and then uh, we'll do the best pat we'll take him a pat anyway I'm gonna go ahead and start off with the RG350 which is the uh, lower end less complicated version um, I flip that up you can see the uh, specs on the side of the box there uh, so it has a 320 by 240 LCD, 3.5 inch IPS. It has this JZ4770 processor. I'm actually kind of interested in this. This is this is not a new processor, not at all. This is a very old piece of hardware. But um, it is a very well-known piece of hardware, which means the software on this thing might actually be pretty polished. Um, 1 gigahertz, uh, I don't know. I, sure. I don't really know what that means as far as its capabilities. Um, because measuring processors in um, how many, how fast their cycles are is pretty meaningless in these days. Um, half gig RAM apparently has built in 16 gigabyte. Uh, TF card, those are micro SD cards, uh, supports type C charging function, low battery LED indicator. We will be testing that to see how it charges. I have no idea if this one is even charged. I have opened it up, but I haven't really played with it that much. Um, and I haven't plugged it in either. Stereo speakers, headphone output, headphone output, 2500 milliamp hour, six hours of battery life, and it supports a uh, micro SD expansion up to 64 gigabytes. That's Kind of weird. I would assume it would be either um, 32 or like 512, but 64. All right. So in the box, you get the device, uh, some creative cut foam to uh, protect the uh, sticks and joypad and whatnot and help prevent it from crashing around. But as you can see, mine actually crashed around in the box quite a bit. Under that, you get the uh, two instruction booklets, at least for the 350, and a USB-C charge cable, but y'all don't care about any of that. You're just going to throw it in the box, and away it goes. So here is the Henbernick RG350. Um, I mean, I kind of, I kind of dig the casing. It's, uh, very clearly designed down to a uh, cost, and I'm not really a fan of the shoulder buttons, but most of what I would be doing on this is probably playing Game Boy games, which don't really use these anyway. 
Um, I'm also not really a fan of how these buttons feel, but I don't know. Maybe it's just uh, maybe it's just that I've been spoiled with um, with other devices. Good button feel is very very difficult to do, um, and Nintendo is a master of their craft in most cases. Um, so yeah, it's it's certainly not a Game Boy. You can tell that just by picking it up, but it's not it's not terrible. It's not terrible. I'm not. I'm not offended, put it that way. So let's see what we got for ports. Uh, of course, we have the two shoulder buttons on the top, two USB-C ports, a headphone labeled AV, so I'm wondering if this has like a composite out, and then a mini HDMI port. Pretty sure that's mini, don't quote me on that. Uh, it's certainly not full size. Uh, on the bottom, we have the power button, volume up, volume down, reset, and then the micro SD card slot labeled TF. And then the two speakers here, nothing on the left, nothing on the right, and nothing interesting on the back. Uh, so let's see if it's even charged, which it probably isn't. Oh, it is. Ha ha. I was mistaken. That's a good sign. Okay. So before we, uh, before we dive into it, take a look at this. I have a USB-A quick charge cable. It should charge on this, no problem. Ooh, but it doesn't. Let's try the other port. Maybe it's weird like that. Yep, charge is fine on the other port. Pulls one amp, does not support quick charge. Uh, otherwise this thing would be jumping up to like 12 volts or something. But, nope. It is what it is. It's not terrible. Let us try the other charger, which fell, and I ran over it with my chair. But we have a USB-C host this time instead of a USB-A, uh, and this one supports power delivery. So let's see. The other port, yeah, this port didn't work for that either. Ooh, and this port doesn't seem to work either. That is unfortunate. So, I'm guessing it is a dumb USB port. Uh, so if you're using this with like an iPhone charger, or excuse me, like a MacBook charger or a Nintendo Switch charger or something, it ain't gonna work, unfortunately. That is, that is unfortunate. Um, something that does actually work, like if I were to plug this into my phone here, you can see this comes on and shows that my phone is pulling 9 volts at 1 amp um, because my phone supports USB power delivery or USB quick charge. I don't know. This, this charger actually supports both. I was kind of confused as to how that works, but um, apparently, apparently that's a thing, USB quick charge over type C, but this is what it is. Um, I will have to get some games loaded up to test this out, though allegedly it does come with some. Uh, I have no idea what most of these are. Well, I know what that is. Astrolander. Oof. Alright, so plenty of emulators. MAME, DOSBox, um, FBA, which I guess is an arcade emulator, uh, NES emulator, Java, uh, Sega Genesis, Game Boy Color, Game Boy, Open Bore, I don't know what that is, uh, Wonder Swan emulator, PlayStation emulator, and another Genesis, Ge 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 Genesis, I'm sorry, Genesis slash Mega Drive emulator, uh, Super Nintendo, Game Boy Advance, Neo Geo Pocket, another Super Nintendo, PC Engine, another Neo Geo, 
and then another MAME. Yeah. You know what? I don't even mind that there's duplicates of emulators because one emulator might work better for certain games and vice versa. So it's always nice to have options. Um, I guess I'm digging the joystick and the buttons. It's all right. Let's see what this test ROM does. So, shows the battery. Ooh, and test the sticks. That's actually really nice to have. All your buttons. That's pretty cool. I dig it. I dig it. And then I think reset just... Oh, let's try those two. And then I think reset just resets it. Can't actually test that because it just resets it. <laughs> I don't know. I'm. It's all right. It's all right. I um. I was looking at this. This isn't my only Ingenic 4770 device. I do have another one that I use for uh, Game Boy Advance emulation. Well, I used to use for Game Boy Advance emulation. It runs Game Boy Advance surprisingly well, and it is hooked up to a. Um, aftermarket Game Boy Micro LCD, so the resolution is actually spot on. That is one of the things that I'm a little bit worried about this one, once I have it loaded up with ROMs, because uh, like I said, my primary use is going to be Game Boy and Game Boy Advance. Is it going to look like garbage? Now, the 320x240 screen should look fantastic for like every home console game that this thing should run. But unfortunately, I think Game Boy and Game Boy Advance and Game Boy Color, I don't think the scaling is going to be any good on those. But uh, we'll find out momentarily. I will get this thing loaded up soon. I wonder if this USB port is just for like file transfer and then this one's for charging or something. The uh, manual that I promptly ignored did mention something about that, but it, was, um, it wasn't very clear to me. which is part of the reason why I ignored it. Uh, so if we pop open the quick start guide, flip to the English side, USB 1 OTG, USB 2 DC. So it looks like the other USB port is for OTG, which means you can just plug in a, um, plug in external memory, use it that way. There's no SD card in there, so it's not going to actually do anything, but I'm guessing that's what that's for. Um, we'll check it out momentarily. Uh, USB charging and data copying. One of the two ports. I'm guessing the USB 2 port. Not the, not the one labeled 2, not the one labeled 1. Um, oh, well, that's probably that. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what else to say. I will, um, oh, you know what? There's an easy way to test this. I don't even have to go get some ROMs. Because that should already have plenty. Explorer, GBX7, that's it. Uh, it doesn't have, I can't launch games that way. Do I have to go into the emulator to launch it? I do. Oh, but these aren't my games. I think these are games that just came with it. Those are games that just came with it. Well, that's... It, it, it is what it is. I don't necessarily agree with... Um, 
paying for piracy like this, but I guess technically you're paying for the device and they're just including this stuff. Um, and I did check the listing. It does say that it includes 2,500 games. So it's not just because they're sending it to me that they included them. I was looking for everyone's favorite, but it's not in there. Oh, there we go. We'll, we'll try that instead. Oof. Yeah, that's kind of what I was worried about. I'm just going to put my SD card back. Ooh, that's loud. Not a bad thing, just startled me. It's also kind of weird having to start and select on opposite sides, but all right. That was an interesting glitch. I will say it does seem pretty smooth so far. But uh, like I said, I'm gonna actually take some time to um, play games on this off screen because I, I can't go through all the emulators in a reasonable amount of time. Not that my videos are usually reasonable, but um, yeah. Ah, that's what I was looking for. I knew there would be some menu. Let's see. Image scaling hardware. Aspect linear. I don't like that. Full linear. No. Full scan? Oh, there you go. It, it adds your little scan lines uh, for a system that never actually had scan lines, but I suppose it does look better than the um, blurry linear scaling. Or, excuse me, bilinear. This doesn't support linear scaling, at least not at that size. Plenty of different options, though. I'm digging that. None. Oh, there you go. Does technically support linear scaling, and and you get this this neat border. In case you're not a fan of uh, blurry mess. I think honestly though, I'd probably leave it on that. Oh wait, no, not full scan. I thought there was another one. I guess not. Never mind. It says linear, but that's not linear. Maybe A. Oops. I'll see if I can dump my save on this thing, because I don't want to go through the first half of the game again. Well, anyway, that's pretty cool. I'm digging that. Uh, performance and debugging. Interesting. Save states, hotkeys, input settings. No, oh, we don't have rapid fire um, mapped, which I would assume will just map to Y and X. I feel like that's the. the appropriate option as opposed to R2 and L2. 
Um, analog sensitivity very high, I guess. Analog in-game binding GBA D-pad. Oh, so you just turn it off or it's GBA D-pad. I don't see why you'd turn that off because if you don't like it, you just use the other one. Anyway, yeah, this is cool. I'm really liking what I see so far. The buttons don't bug me nearly as much as I thought they would. Um, ooh, I should play... I should actually try this real quick. This is my uh, usual go-to for testing buttons. For this particular device, I wish they had swapped these two. I don't mind having the joystick, but I wish the default would have been the D-pad because holding it like this is kind of uncomfortable. But holding it like this is perfectly fine. Yeah, I'm already hearing some audio glitches. Ooh, and there was some stutter there. That's unfortunate. And right there. kind of get in the way though. I keep wanting to hit it with my thumb. That is back. To, yeah. It's fine. It's pretty good. Totally okay with that. Unfortunately, it is dropping frames and a little bit stuttery, but it is what it is. Turn that off for now. I'm actually going to plug it in to let it charge because, like I said, I will be actually trying it out and you do have your charge indicator right there. Let's check out the RG351P next. Uh, so, pretty much the same thing. You get the device, your neat little foam cut out and then underneath it you have your uh, quick start guide and the USB-C charge cable and there's only one one piece of paper this time all right so with this thing it is the exact same layout except you don't have mini HDMI um, the uh, joystick is in different position they they did better by me, in my opinion, on this side. There's these weird things on the back for the grip, and then you don't have a power button on the bottom, nor do you have volume. The power button is actually on the left side, and then volume, you get a wheel instead, so you get some analog control. Um, feels like it has membrane buttons for start and select, which are actually a little bit easier to press because on this one, they're pretty recessed, but so far, I'm digging it. Uh, this one has a QC sticker over the uh, SD card, which means I'm guessing that's, I wonder if that's the 64 gigabytes of onboard storage. I'm sorry, I just realized I forgot to do this. So here are the specs of this one. Instead of the Ingenix CPU, you get a rock chip CPU quad core. Um, 1.5 gigahertz. See, I mean, that doesn't, doesn't mean anything. Uh, Mali G31 GPU, one gigabyte of memory, 64 gigabytes of storage. 
Uh, you get a higher resolution screen. This one's 320 by 480, which is excellent because it means it should support linear scaling for Game Boy Advance games. OCA all fit screen. That means the lens is laminated to the LCD. So it's going to look phenomenal. It, okay. I'm not going to say it's going to look phenomenal because I have no idea how it's going to look, but it's going to look better than this one, which the LCD is just physically behind the display. There's an air gap. You can see through it. It's kind of weird. Laminated displays almost universally look better. The only downside is repairability because this lens is now joined to the LCD, and if you ever need to replace one, you're replacing both of them. It is what it is. Um, it's, it's the trade-off you get for, uh, for looking fly as hell, I guess. Um, battery, bigger battery, lasts for eight hours. The other one said it lasted for six, and it supports a TF card of up to 256 gigabytes. So I'm hoping that this is not the 64 that's included, I'm hoping this is just something that they that they did for me because I don't remember this one coming with ROMs. Of course, I could be wrong, and I might have to double check, but let's just dive in and see what happens. Ooh, this one has rumble. Neat. I didn't know that. I didn't uh, apparently didn't look at the specs well enough. Uh, so it boots quite a bit slower, but it uses emulation station. And I'm not quite familiar with the user interface for Emulation Station. A little bit more comfortable with Open Dingux. But um, before I get into that, let's let's see if this one supports. Let's start with the one that should definitely work. Um, this is USB Quick Charge with a USB A host. Again, doesn't do anything in the OTG port, which is actually labeled on this model. OTG, and then the other one is OTG data connection. So this one is probably the charge port, and indeed it is. Pulling basically 1.2 amps like the other one doesn't appear to support quick charge, which is fine. Completely fine. You got your LED charge indicator. It was uh, yellow and green when it's charging, whereas when it's on, it's just green. Unfortunately, no quick charge, which means it probably doesn't support power delivery either. Hopefully they fixed the USB-C compatibility. No, they didn't do that either. That is unfortunate. Um, not, not a tremendously big deal, but it is such a disappointment to see on devices like this because to get this working, you literally need two resistors. In bulk, those resistors cost fractions of a penny. Fractions of a penny. To get it working like properly with like USB PD and USB QC support, one or the other, not both. I mean, yeah, it is quite a bit more expensive, but to get it to work with a USB type C host and successfully negotiate five volts, two resistors, that's all you need. So it's Kind of a shame to see that that's not supported there. Um, Dreamcast, oh, that's interesting. I'm not sure if the D-pad on this one feels better because it's in a better spot or because it's just a better D-pad, but I like it. I also like how much smoother this is looking, but hopefully that's, um, Hopefully that's everything and not just the UI. Did I scroll right past Game Boy Advance? Yeah. We'll just jump right into that same game. Slower to start, but that looks heaps better. Plenty loud as well. So, while I have never been a fan of this, like, pixel grid emulation that um, a lot of the newer backlight kits for Game Boys have been supporting, looks like this has that on by default, but... 
it's probably the power button again, isn't it? Nope. It wasn't the power button. Does that put it to sleep? Or does that shut it off? It puts it to sleep. I thought... Aha! There we go. Solar sensor level. Neat! So you can play games like Boktai. Oh, that is... That's a nice feature. I didn't know that that was a, even a thing in emulators. So, from how this D-pad feels, uh, I don't think that this setting is even relevant. But what this setting does, allow opposing directional input. This setting makes it so that you can't press left and right at the same time, or up and down at the same time. Which is completely impossible with a joystick, but um, completely possible with one of these D-pads if it's not built properly. This one does feel like it's built properly, so I'm going to leave that off. Game Boy Model. Um, that's irrelevant for Game Boy Advance. Uh, use BIOS file. Ooh, this thing's coming with a BIOS. I hope it's coming with the open hardware one, because that's not explicitly okay otherwise. Um, I don't know what a loop removal is. Yeah, okay. Interesting. Never played with that. Frame skip. To frame blending. Oh, that's a neat feature. I wonder if this is what um, what some of the newer backlight kits for Game Boy are doing. Because uh, what what's going on is um, on all of the original Game Boy systems, the pixel response times are just garbage. Pure garbage. Um, at least compared to more modern consoles. I mean, you're used to your smartphone with your OLED and your fancy blah blah blah. Um, but on Game Boys, they just had really bad ghosting, so to achieve uh, transparency effects cheaply, a lot of game devs would just flash a pat up a uh, sprite on and off, on and off real quick, and because of the ghosting, it just made it look transparent. This is an emulation feature for that because this newer screen has much better pixel response times. This isn't at all what I was looking for, but this is super... Oh, what did I just change? I changed something. I want that on. Because that's actually really... I, no, I want that off. I'm kidding. I want to play with it later, but I want it off for now. Options screen overlay, video layout. Shaders. Oh, there you go. So it defaults to linear scaling, which I'm fine with. Uh, the resolution is a little bit weird, I think, because this looks like a uh, widescreen display and Game Boy Advance was not a widescreen console. Uh, LCD 3X, is that what? That's what it was, okay. That's cool. I'll have to play with that more. I don't know anything about shaders. As far as like setting up shaders and whatnot. Um, oh, apparently it starts supports recording. I don't know how well streaming supports. I'm pretty sure this is just like generic software for this device, so I don't know if all these features actually do something. I'll have to play more later. Um, well, there are no scaling options, which is kind of a disappointment, or at least none that I can find. You can rewind in games. That's cheating. 
It's like save states, but you don't even have to have them enabled. Cheats, shaders, yeah. Oh, wait, that was just a quick menu. Oh, yeah, this is RetroArch, so... If you're familiar with RetroArch, you already know what's going on. I am not familiar with RetroArch. I thought the UI looked familiar, but I couldn't quite place it until I saw that. Yeah, I'm sure this does support more stuff, but I just don't know what I'm doing, so... I'll play with it a little bit first. But so far, I am... much more impressed with this device. be interesting and I don't know if the uh, I do that every single time um, I don't know if this is feasible for me to do but it would be interesting to test the input lag such that you know I could just wire something into one of the buttons uh, so that it just lights up an LED or something anytime you press the button and um, just record in uh, slow-mo, high frame rate, and see how long it takes for the screen to update that I press the button. It would be interesting to see if the input lag on this one is higher than the other one, and uh, if it's like even noticeable, or I guess noticeably higher than a uh, real Game Boy. Oh yeah, this one's completely fine too. Oh yeah, the menus just click both sticks. I don't even have to, like, actually sit down and play these games to know that I'm gonna like this device significantly more than I'm gonna like this device. They are basically the same size, um, length, width, height, and thickness. Uh, this one has less rounded corners, so it looks a little bit thicker, but in actuality, they're about the same. Uh, but it does have recessed joysticks, which means pocketability. It's actually gonna be quite a bit better. Uh, but I will give this one a fair shake too, and that Game Boy Advance glitchiness I was experiencing earlier could just be Game Boy Advance, because there's multiple emulators across both of these systems. But, so far, for Game Boy Advance, I'm actually really happy with this one. The, the aspect ratio is just... I'm still not liking it, but it's something I can get used to because the um, actual screen itself looks so good and there's no other visual glitches that I can tell. Uh, but I gotta get this thing loaded up with some test ROMs, uh, some of my actual games so I can play through, and I gotta play with both of these. But so far, I'm, uh, I'm liking what I see, at least from this one. Uh, so with that said, I'll bid you guys farewell for the meantime, and I will catch you later. Thanks for watching.